I am Andrew Propina Jr. And I'm Shirley Propina. Welcome to Holy Nation Ministry. Virtually, we are Holy Nation Global because from here, we are there. Holy Nation is a family church with a global vision. Our mission is to evangelize the lost, disciple the believer, and empower the disciple. Thank you for visiting. Enjoy your stay. And we are praying that, that we, we see you, you again. Also in me. 
In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare, let me say prepare, a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. You know, it takes faith to do anything. You know that? Let me say faith. It takes faith to do anything. It takes faith. Even people who don't believe in the Lord use faith, mother. It takes faith to hope. It takes faith to dream. It takes faith. Let me say faith. It takes faith to serve. It takes faith to sow. And it even takes faith to receive. Amen. It takes all of that. Faith, the word, pastor, what is it? Faith, the word can be described as that confidence or trust that we place in a person, thing, or concept. Faith, it takes faith to drive on the interstate and the freeway. Help me say faith. It takes faith to fly in an airplane, Craig. It takes faith. Amen. You may not even think about it. Some of y'all get in the car and just put the key in it and crank it up. You got gas in there. You got battery and sparks and all these things in here. You got a bomb. You're actually driving a bomb possible, but you just get in there and say, come on, kids, let's go. You even invite your kids to become a part and participant of your faith. You invite your friends, you invite your mom, your father, whomever. Come on in, let's go. We're going to Texas. We're going to North Carolina. We're going to Mississippi. We're going alone. We can't see it, but we're going. We can't see it right now. Hear me say faith. Uh-huh. But, but faith for the believer, beloved, in Jesus Christ is more that, than a mere word. The believers identify faith in Jesus Christ. Christ as a gift that, that has come from the Lord. And because we identify faith as not just a word, but as a gift from God, we have confidence in God. We have confidence in his word. We have confidence in his doctrines. Let me say faith. Hebrews 11 1 reminds us that now faith is the substance or that guaranteed agreement. Faith is that guaranteed agreement of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Have you really thought about that, that, that last part, that faith, you're dealing with stuff that you've never seen, you're, but you're still holding on to it, you're still grasping on, you're still, your dreams and your ambitions are it's, it's way down the road. You can't even see it, but you have enough faith in the Lord to call those things and speak those things that are not as though they were. In other words, faith is a gift from God which we use to see the unseen. Faith is a gift of God that we use to see the unseen, have hope for the hopeless, and expect receive those things which begun in the spirit. Faith, when you're working in the spirit, when you're working in the unseen realm of God. Help me say faith. You're, you're, you're actually, it has no one else has seen it. You have only seen it, as the old folks say, going with your mind's eye. Amen. You've seen it there. And, and the more you study about it, the more you began to approach the throne of grace about it, the more real it becomes to you, even though it has not yet appeared in the earth realm. Everybody shout faith. My brothers and my sisters, the world is quickly losing faith. Studies, Pew Research, all show, show that when they say faith, when they say faith, they're talking about faith in religion, faith in 
God. When they say people are losing faith, they're, they're, not, they're not saying they're losing faith in themselves. They're not saying they're losing hopes and dreams and aspirations of accomplishments. They're not saying that, but when they say that the world is losing faith, they always talk about the religious order. But I'm here to tell you that, that the Bible still reminds us that every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. Amen. You, it may seem like we are drifting and, and pontificating and wondering where, where everything is taking the place of the believers coming together to give the Lord praise. I can give him praise by myself, Pastor. I can read the word by myself and understand. I've taken some religion courses and I can understand. But remember, remember just the last week we talked about the fivefold ministry and all of the gifts. Some he gave some. The Lord gave some what apostles and he gave some prophets. He gave some evangelists. He gave some priests. He gave some teachers for the perfecting of the church. So the world is quickly, as I said, losing its faith. And the Bible speaks of in the last days there, that there will be wars and rumors of wars and also a great falling away. Mm -hmm. But I'm here to encourage us today that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. As never before, this is the time to exercise your faith and trust in the Word of God. How many of y'all trust in the Word of God? Hallelujah. The way you start trusting the Word of God, first thing you got to do is read the Word of God. Amen. The more you, you want to get more faith in the Word of God, begin to talk to the writer of the Word, the mind of God. The Word of God is the mind of God. And for a few moments, I want to talk to you about my seed is coming back. Look at you, the neighbor said, Neighbor, be encouraged because all of your sacrifices, all of your helpfulness, is coming back in the form of a harvest. My seed is coming back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of y'all have sown some good seed? You know, you, you know, you didn't tell anybody. You didn't tell anybody. You just did it because the unction of the Lord said, do that. You didn't, you didn't do it for anybody to pat you on the back. You didn't do it for some social media uh, viewership increase and to go viral or nothing like that. But you just did it because it needed doing. You bless somebody just because God says so. So as we look at the text, beloved, for the disciples here, this is a solemn moment in this text. And Jesus begins to speak an encouragement to them. He's talking to them. This is coming after the Lord's Supper. And Jesus has given them some, some disturbing news. He's given them some disturbing news. He's saying that he's going away and he's going to be crucified. Can you imagine? Can you imagine these men, these 12 men have given up everything to follow Jesus and down the road uh, 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 he, he tells them, he springs this on them. You know, he takes them out to eat. Takes them out to eat and you know, everything is good, you know. And, and while they're at Houston's dining, he said, hey, y'all, listen. Uh, he didn't say I got some bad news. I just got news. See, in the Bible, it's good news. Even there are some bad episodes. Amen. There's some challenges that you go through each day. But your life is good. You may have gone through some disappointments. You may have gone through some hard times. Wait, if, if you've gone through some hard times. Amen. Everybody, babies go through hard times. Everything, hard times are relative. 
Amen. You can't, you can't, you can't, I can't tell you what I went through and you say, oh, that was nothing. You can't tell me what you went through and I say, oh, that wasn't. You think that's something. Let me tell you what I went through. Amen. Amen. We're going to have a Job moment for a moment. No, no. Every step that you take, first of all, is a step of providence. Hallelujah. Just keep walking in faith. So Jesus attempts to assure them. He tells them, say, look, boys, it's 12 of y'all. One of y'all the devil. You know. You know. He that dippeth his hand in me, in the dish with me, is going to betray me. So this has already happened. They, they outside in the parking lot. And, you know, can you imagine Judas in there like, wow. Oh. Went off on me. I wouldn't do him like that. And then he goes, his bad boy, his inner circle guy, Peter. He said, "And you going you gonna deny me thrice?" Peter, like, hey, you know, we down, we ten toes down. Listen, I didn't. I'm not gonna do that. All of this disruption is in this, this, this in, the cha in the chapter above this one. And now he's coming to try to encourage them. Amen. You know when you have to tell your child some truth, you don't want to just leave it there. You know, you, you want to encourage them. Saying, but, you know, uh, Big Daddy love you. Oh, Mama love you. But, but I, I have to share this with you because if I don't share the truth with you, the, listen, if you've been living a lie, a lie will cause you to fall. Amen. Amen. It'll cause you to lose your faith when you find out stuff that was a lie. Amen. Uh, the truth hurts, but the truth also helps. So Jesus is here to encourage them. Jesus attempts to show up these men's faith, for these men have been faithful to him during his ministry. Jesus lets them know that all is not lost and that uh, precious and valuable, here's that thing, time has not been wasted. Let me say time. Have you found out the older you get, the more valuable your time is to you? Oh, have you found out the older you get, the, that time speeds up? It doesn't speed up, but it just seems like it. You're like, Lord Jesus, it's Friday already. My God, you know, have you found out that, that when you actually get focused on something, things that, things that you know you were supposed, that you were born to do, and you start going after that, that it just seems like you run out of time? You, and then you start praying, Lord, help me now. Give me some more time, God. Lord, and, and then I keep telling you, rebuke this one. You know, if I had a known then what I know now, that's from the devil. Because the devil is trying to get you to discount everything you've gone through. Of the experiences you've gone through, good, bad, or indifferent, have made you and sustained you. My brothers and sisters, don't look down on the disciples here because even when you have sown time and effort into somebody, some relationship, some marriage, some friendship, a career, you would love to think that some type of return would come back for your investment. Amen. For you to make money, money has to spend some time somewhere. If somebody tell you, give me some money, and I'm going to put it on a pillowcase, and, and, you know, let's let it stay under the pillowcase for two or three weeks and then come back, and I'm going to give you some more money. Oh, somebody going to come up short. Because money has to work. Money has to be responsible for something working. Amen. Y'all know them little puns and schemes. And they, what they say? If it sounds too good to be true, it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it takes time. 
It takes time. You are at a place in your life, and I'm looking at y'all. You're at a place in your life right now that the enemy is so afraid of you. He's so afraid that you will come into a place like this and hear a word that will show you that, that you have a wick that will show you that God has given you oil, that, that has shown you that God has given you the fire to light that thing inside of you. All good and perfect gifts come from the Father. Amen? The greatest thing that the enemy wants to do is to steal your gift. Amen? To squelch your potential. He, he wants you to feel like in your mind, he, yeah, well, you know, you could have done that 20 years ago. You, you, yeah, 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 I, I, you know. But see, that's, that go God again, missing. See, why come he, he know everything? Why come he just didn't tell you that 20 years ago? Amen? Mm, mm, mm. Heaven say, but my seed is coming back. Hallelujah. Your relationship, all of these things, your careers. The text says here, let not your heart be troubled. You, you know, when we're going to funerals, a lot of times the preacher get up and quote that scripture. Let not your heart be troubled. Things don't have to be dead for your heart to be troubled. Things don't have to be going awry for your heart to be troubled. Sometimes you may not even know that your heart is troubled. Sometimes the enemy can just help us get into pause. Help us get into, I'm all right. I have enough. My children are cool. My home is cool. My family is cool. I, I, nobody's bothering me. And, and you will not know that, that the enemy has caused you to get into a pause situation. But, but I'm here to encourage you. As the word is saying, the Lord is saying, listen, you have not wasted your time. You have not wasted a moment, not a tittle. Even when you sleep, you're not wasting time in the Lord because God will begin to deal with your dream system and deal with your vision even when you're resting. So he says, let not your heart. That heart, Greek word means kared or uh, your concentration, your character be troubled. Let not your character, let not who you are supposed to be, to be changed because you're going through some stuff. You know, you just done lost off. The person cut you off on 240 and you just done lost it. You just going behind them, blowing your heart. Bah, bah, bah. I, I'm not talking about y'all, I'm talking to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't let your, your concentration be thrown off. In other words, you know, it can be something as simple as a cloudy day, Dr. Jeter. It can be something as simple as a cloudy day. It can be something as simple as a rainy day. It can be as simple as the sun is shining too bright today for me. My concentration is all off. It can be as simple as I don't have anything to wear. So I'll just wait until I get something to wear. But hear me say time. Amen. Keep time in your mind. So it says, let not your heart be troubled and uh, be not disturbed. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. The first part of this encouragement as these disciples are out here with their heads hung down and Jesus is trying to give them some encouragement about they have not wasted their time. They have not quit their jobs for naught. Uh, they have not moved to Dallas for naught. <laughs> All of it, whatever you did, you're moving. You're moving. When you're walking by faith, you don't see it. 
but you're just in the unction and you saying, I believe this is what I'm supposed to do for this time. Amen. So the first encouragement that Jesus offers to his disciples is my seed guarantees me serenity. Let me say my seed guarantees me serenity or peace. Anybody like to have peace? I mean, I'm just at peace right now. You can be in a working situation. You can, things can be going on all around you and you still be at peace. Amen? You can be at a home by your lonesome listening to some music and just sitting there in a dark place and not be in peace. Peace is not about what's going on or what's not going on in the existential. Peace is about what's going on in your heart. Here Jesus is telling disciples, I know you have spent long and valuable hours with me. I know you have left careers and families to follow me. And don't allow the voices of the enemy to disrupt your concentration uh, or disturb your character because you have sown good seed and the harvest from those seeds are coming back. Look at somebody and say, be encouraged. Come on, look at them and say, be encouraged. You have sown good seed. Amen. Be encouraged. You know you've sown good seed. Amen. My sisters, he may have left you with kids and you were faithful. Yes, my brother, she may have cheated on you and you were vigilant. Yes, I know uh, you worked a long time on that job and they fired you for no good reason. But he's saying, don't let your heart be troubled. <laughs> don't let your mind be disturbed. And Jesus continues on and saying imperatively and emphatically, ye believe in God. And it's something about your faith in the Lord that you must believe in God. In other words, you must trust in his word. Hallelujah. I know when you're hearing all of the chatter in the social media realm and in the media realm in general, it becomes difficult and sometimes deafening. But you have to focus in on the word of God and be uh, have focused in on God. He says, believe also in me. If you believe in God, believe also in me. Psalms 46 and 1 says this, God is our refuge. Oh, my goodness, he's our shelter. Uh, he's our place. Uh, he's our strength. Uh, help me say, he's my shelter. Well, we thank God for that word. We thank God for that wonderful word that he sent to us on today. Uh, every week, our pastor is teaching on Tuesday night at 7 p.m. on our Holy Nation YouTube channel. And we would like for you to come and be a part of our Bible study. You can also join us Monday through Friday for our prayer conference call uh, on on Monday through Friday uh, that information should be at the bottom of the screen and we want to and in just invite everyone to come and be a part of Holy Nation YouTube channel make sure you just share and subscribe and do everything you need to do to continue to help us get the word of God out to the world I want to thank you for your stewardship as well to Holy Nation Church of Memphis. We thank God for you. As you know, we have several means of giving uh, to Holy Nation Ministries. Uh, all of that information is at the bottom of the screen. Um, you're welcome to do that. You can even come by the church and drop it off, or you are welcome to mail it in if that's your means of getting it in to us. We will be so glad to receive it at that time. Thank you again for your stewardship. Well, until next time, we just want to say that we love you with the love of the Lord. Thank you for joining us uh, on Holy Nation YouTube channel. We we love to have you. You're welcome here at any time. And until next time, God bless and walk in favor. <laughs>